Dear students, welcome to the lecture series on the topic Engineering Graphics. Today we are going to discuss about section of the solids. I am Dr. Aipya Sahuja, Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Punjabi University, Patiala. Now here we have been provided with a cone having diameter of the base equal to 60 mm, axis height is equal to 70 mm and this cone happens to be resting on its base onto the horizontal plane and this cone has been cut by an auxiliary inclined plane passing through the apex. So we can check this cone happens to be passing through the apex and it will be cutting the base at two points over here. So now we have been provided with the information that the true shape of this cut section it is an isosceles triangle having 48 millimeter as the base over here that is whatever two points will be available with us onto the base of this particular cone as it has been cut by this auxiliary inclined plane which happens to be perpendicular to the vertical plane and inclined to the horizontal plane at a certain angle over here. So these two points will be available onto the base and this will be the apex point which we are going to obtain over here. So we have been provided with the information that the true shape of this cut section will be an isosceles triangle having base is equal to 48 millimeter that is if we plot these two points over here onto the top view projections we will find that the distance of the two extreme points which are available onto the base they will be lying at a distance of 24 millimeter from the axis point over here so this way into the top view projections the distance of 24 millimeter on either side of this longer diagonal it will provide us with the location of the two points into the horizontal plane over here so this way we are required to evaluate the angle of inclination of this auxiliary inclined plane with respect to the horizontal plane as this angle of inclination of the AIP has not been given rather the byproduct or the result of this inclination of the cutting plane onto the cone has been provided to us in such a way that we have been able to locate these two points onto the top view projections which will be located 24 millimeter on either side of the diagonal over here. So this way once we are able to locate those two points then we will be able to locate the corresponding base point of this auxiliary inclined plane into the elevation view projections over here. So this way we are required to evaluate the front view projections, the top view projections of this truncated cone and we are also required to evaluate the true shape of this cut section. So we know the base of the true shape of the cut section which is 48 but we do not know the length of the two sides of the isosceles triangle which will be available with us corresponding to these two edges of the isosceles triangle which will be formed by joining of the point O dash with the two base edges which we have obtained over here. Now let us first of all proceed with the construction of the orthographic projections of the cone as this cone happens to be resting onto its base on the horizontal plane. So we know that the base dimension or the diameter happens to be 60 millimeter. So the top view projections of this cone that are the circular projections we have drawn onto the horizontal plane below the XY reference line. Now we can divide the top view projections of this cone into four parts. So these are the points 1, 2, 3 and point 4 and now we can join the diagonals 1, 3 and 2, 4 so wherever these two diagonals of the cone they intersect with each other 
we obtain the access points O and O1. Point O represents the apex point, whereas point O1 represents the access point which is available at the base of this cone over here. So now having marked all the points in the top view projections, now we have to evaluate the front view projections of this cone. So we can see that corresponding to the base, point 1 will be projected as 1 dash onto the xy reference line. Points 2, O1 and 4, they will be projected as 2 dash, 4 dash and O1 dash onto the xy reference line. Similarly, the point 3 of the base of the cone, it will be projected as point 3 dash onto the xy reference line. And we also know that the height of the axis of this cone, it happens to be 70 millimeter. So once we mark the height of the axis as 70 millimeter in the front view projections, so this apex point onto this axis line which has been drawn through the points O and O1, so apex point will be located over here. And now having located this apex point O dash, now we can join O dash 1 dash, O dash 2 dash, O dash 3 dash and O dash 4 dash over here. Now we know that the cutting plane, it passes through the apex of this particular cone. But we do not know where does this cutting plane or the auxiliary inclined plane, it pass through the base of this particular cone because we know that whenever a cutting plane is going to pass through the apex and the base over there corresponding to this point of intersection we are going to obtain two points which will be the symmetrical points over here alongside this diagonal that is 1 3 so these two points will be available in the top view projection so usually what is happening the angle of orientation of the auxiliary inclined plane with the horizontal plane is given so we obtain this point and from this point we obtain the vertical projector line into the top view then these two points we are able to locate into the top view projections over here but now the angle of inclination of this auxiliary inclined plane with respect to horizontal plane has not been provided rather this dimension of the base of the isosceles triangle has been provided to us. So as we have already discussed that this dimension will be represented in the symmetrical manner across this particular diagonal over here. So alongside this diagonal if we draw a vertical projector which will be equal to half of the side of the base over here. So edge of the base of the isosceles triangle happens to be 48 millimeter. So from the point O or O1, we are going to mark a distance of 24 millimeter above the diagonal 1, 3. Similarly, we are going to mark the distance 24 millimeter below the diagonal 1, 3. And through these two projector lines, once we mark these two points over here, onto the circumference of the cone. So this way, these two points of intersection of the auxiliary inclined plane and the base of the cone we have been able to identify. How? Because now we know distance between these two points happens to be 48 millimeter. So 24 millimeter above the diagonal 1, 3 and 24 millimeter below the diagonal 1, 3, we have been able to locate this point. So these two points we can mark as point A between points 2 and 3 alongside the circumference. So this point will be point A and then the second point of intersection of this cutting plane with the base of the cone will be this point. This point will be labeled as point B over here. So point B lies alongside the circumference between the points 3 and 4 whereas point A lies alongside the circumference of the cone or the base of the cone alongside this particular points 2 and 3 over here. So between these two points. So this way 
points A and B have been appropriately located into the top view projections. Now, if we draw a vertical projector line through the points A and B, now the projections of points A and B because points A and B happen to lie onto the base of the cone. So, these two points will be projected as A dash and B dash onto the XY reference line. So once we obtain this point A dash B dash corresponding to the auxiliary inclined plane which is going to cut the base at these two points over here. So in the front view these two points they will be coinciding with each other as A dash and B dash. Now we can join the auxiliary inclined plane through the points O dash and A dash B dash over here. So now the inclination of the cutting plane with respect to the horizontal plane can be evaluated and it can be appropriately marked over here. Now we are also required to evaluate the sectioned top view projections corresponding to this cutting plane cutting this cone over here. Now we can see as the observer is going to look at this cut section over here from the top view. Now we are going to obtain O, A, B projections into the top view projections over here. So this is the section top view which represents the apparent shape projection corresponding to this large cut section which is appearing as an edge view in the front view projections over here. So this is a large this is a large cut section which we are able to see as an edge view over here. Whereas the top view projections they are represented as a very small projection onto the horizontal plane. Why? Because there is a steep orientation. This angle of inclination is very high larger the angle of inclination of this AIP with respect to the horizontal plane. So the smaller projections we are going to obtain into the top view projections over here. So the apparent shape projections O, A, B have been obtained in the top view projections. Now as this AIP has cut this cone into this orientation. So this portion of the cone has to be discarded. Similarly, this portion of the cone has to be discarded. So we are left with this portion of the cone as the remainder portion of the cone, which is left behind. Similarly, in the front view projections, so this will be the left behind portion of the cone, which is available with us over here. Now we are required to obtain the true shape projections of the cut section. So in order to obtain the true shape projections of the cut section, observer has to look at this cut section from this orientation. And now we are required to obtain an auxiliary inclined plane X1, Y1, which should be drawn parallel to this cut section or which should be drawn parallel to this auxiliary inclined cutting plane over here. So now since this cut section happens to be parallel to this auxiliary inclined plane X1, Y1. So the auxiliary plan projections which will be obtained onto this AIP, they will be providing us with the true shape projections of this cut section into the auxiliary plan projections over here. So now from points O dash and points A dash and B dash, we have drawn two perpendicular projectors onto the AIP X1, Y1, which has been drawn parallel to this cut section over here. So now we have to obtain three points onto this auxiliary plan view, which will be revealing the true shape of this cut section. Now what we have to do over here, corresponding to the point O over here in the top view projection. Now we are going to measure the distance between point O and the XY reference line. Once we measure this distance of point O from the XY reference line, now corresponding to this projector line emerging from the front view projection of the point O dash onto this projector line, 
द सेम डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट ओ फ्रॉम द एक्स वाई रेफरेंस लाइन विल बी मार्क्ड ओवर हेयर सो दिस डिस्टेंस ऑफ पॉइंट ओ वन फ्रॉम द ए आई पी एक्स वन वाई वन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट ओ फ्रॉम द एक्स वाई रेफरेंस लाइन ओवर हेयर नाउ लेट अस मार्क द सेकेंड पॉइंट नाउ द सेकेंड पॉइंट हैपन्स टू बी पॉइंट बी ओवर हेयर सो वी नो द डिस्टेंस ऑफ पॉइंट बी फ्रॉम द एक्स वाई रेफरेंस लाइन नाउ ऑन टू द प्रोजेक्टर लाइन इमर्जिंग फ्रॉम द पॉइंट बी डैश ऑफ द एलिवेशन प्रोजेक्शन व्यू सेम डिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट बी फ्रॉम द एक्स वाई रेफरेंस लाइन विल बी मार्क्ड अहेड ऑफ द प्लेन सो दिस वे पॉइंट बी वन हैज ऑल्सो बीन ऑप्टेन इन टू द ऑग्जिलरी प्लान प्रोजेक्शन व्यू एंड फाइनली we are going to measure the distance between point a and the xy reference line now from the front view projections of the point a dash on to this projector line we are required to mark the same distance of point a from the xy reference line on to this projector line ahead of the auxiliary inclined plane x1 y1 now we have been able to obtain the points o1 b1 and a1 and one thing again we need to remember that is the distance between points b and a in the top few projections they are going to provide us with the dimension of the base of the isosceles triangle so this distance should be equal to 48 mm so this is 24 plus 24 so distance between a and b happens to be 48 mm so over here also the distance between a1 and b1 will also be equal to 48 mm which will constitute the edge of this isosceles triangle now we can see the distance o1 a1 and the distance o1 b1 corresponding to these two edges of the isosceles triangle they happen to be equal so now this distance was not available with us on the earlier occasion so we have been able to evaluate the distance between o1 a1 and the distance between o1 b1 which is equal over here so that is why the triangle o1 a1 b1 happens to be an isosceles triangle and the true length of the distances o1 a1 and o1 b1 we have evaluated so this distance is also true length because this was already available with us also so this way we have been able to obtain the true shape of the cut section that is o1 a1 and b1 on to the auxiliary plan projections which have been appropriately obtained on to the auxiliary inclined plane x1 y1 which has been drawn parallel to this cut section or parallel to this cutting plane over here so this is all for today so i hope that through this discussion you would have understood about the procedure to evaluate the front view the top view projections of the truncated solid and the true shape projections of the cut section when this cone has been cut by an auxiliary inclined plane passing through the apex point and two points of the base over here we are going to continue with further discussion regarding few more illustrative cases of sections of the solids in the coming lectures over here so thank you very much thanks a lot